Great. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm Lisa Frederick with First Pick. I'm also joined by my colleague, Dennis, my colleague, Christine Dennis, who is presenting with me today. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that, Christine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is the third webinar in our series to support the Envision Center demonstration. Um, if you've been able to join either of the first two webinars, you're probably getting familiar with the names First Pick and BCT Partners. Um, but we're both providers that have been working with HUD's Office of Innovation since January on technical assistance for the Envision Center demonstration. As was mentioned before, these webinars are part of the technical assistance grants with the Office of Innovation. But in addition to that, First Pick and BCT are working on direct technical assistance for the Envision Center community as well. Um, while HUD is working to establish an online system to support technical assistance, um, we have been working to reach out to each Envision Center directly. So you've likely heard from one of us um, over the past couple of weeks, we're trying to cover the whole, um, all 50 plus Envision Centers um, to make an initial connection. We're just hoping to have a brief conversation with you to just hear a little bit more about your programs and services, um, to understand a little bit more as we move forward with the direct TA um, in general. Um, and we know COVID has kind of taken an effect on everybody, but want to just to connect and just hear about how you're all doing. So if we haven't correct, connected directly, we'll be following up again, but feel free to reach out um, um, to us as we move through this process. So just some quick housekeeping issues is, um, again, if you've been on these webinars before, you'll know we're really trying to use, utilize the chat feature. So if that isn't open on your screen, if you toggle to the bottom, there's a little messaging button and that will open your chat. Um, Christine and I um, will use this feature throughout, so we'll answer questions along the way through the presentation. So feel free to throw them into chat. Um, everyone is on mute net right now. If you do have a question that you'd like to ask through the phone, please raise your hand and we'll kind of unmute you at a time um, that, that works to take a quick break. And then at the very end, we will um, open up all the lines. So in case anyone's just on by phone or some way, we can be sure to hear um, everyone and, and answer all those questions. So today um, we're talking about marketing. Um, you know, in our last webinar, we talked about data collection and really tried to emphasize that that um, spans a wide spectrum of steps and processes and, and so does marketing. Um, there may be simple outreach associated with your Envision Center programs, or you might be thinking of some large scale marketing plan that really encompasses a lot of steps over a long period of time. Um, and of course, we know there's something in between all of that um, in terms of the work you're doing, where you are, where you are as an Envision Center. Um, and so through the webinar, we kind of want to highlight some of the talk topics. Um, we'll talk about marketing, what it is, why it's important, how it, how it can help you, and the types of marketing and strategies and tools you might employ. Um, we all know that we're kind of working and living under this global pandemic, and your marketing plans might be a little different now than how you would generally approach them. Um, but there, is, there are certain things that are consistent throughout in terms of how you want to market to people, who your audience are, tools and things like that. And, and so those are some of the things that we want to cover through this webinar. Um, as an Envision Center, again, we know your goals um, are the same prior to COVID hitting. They just might be a little bit more increased or heightened right now. Um, and so as part of talking about marketing, especially in this current situation, we really want to be sure that people know what services and programs are out there um, and really um, that their needs can be met at this kind of heightened time that we're all living through. So what is marketing? I think there's lots of ways to define marketing and it might be slightly different on the field, um, but in general, kind of what we are coming at in terms of an Envision Center is we see it as the activities and processes for communicating, delivering, exchanging information and offerings that have a value for your clients, funders, and partners. Um, so, it's, so it's what you're putting out there. It's what you want people to understand and how they get connected with the Envision Center. It's your plan to outreach in the community. And again, whether that's to get to reach new clients, to connect with you know, other service partners, or to find funders to help you support all the great work that you're doing. Um, you know, what we're going to talk about is what you want to convey, what important information may be important, and just generally what you're looking to share about your Envision Center. 
So to kind of bring this all back um, to thinking about the Envision Center and the four pillars, um, you know, in terms of the four pillars of the Envision Center demonstration, they're really broad, but really they're all they're all the important pieces that are kind of key to self-sufficiency, and they really help foster and support attaining that goal. Um, and so again, as we're all kind of living and working in this pandemic, services in these areas might be even more important, you know, managing under our current environment. environment. Um, certainly unemployment rates we know are, are jumping up, and so how can we connect opportunities to those in need? Um, this might be a time for individuals who are really searching out new educational training that will better position them um, when future opportunities do arise. And of course, I think health and wellness are kind of at the forefront of things that we're worried about um, while well, living kind of in the in the COVID-19 world. So as you think of marketing and promoting the services and programs of the Envision Center, really thinking about how your work really focuses on the specific needs that people are um, dealing with right now and you know how's the best way to reach out to people um, as we all as we all kind of stay in and keep safe. Any questions so far? I guess I want to just take a brief look. And, okay, but feel free to throw in things into the chat. And again, we'll um, and raise your hand if there's anything you want to add. So just again, to kind of talk about why marketing is important. Um, Envision centers were established as centralized hubs for services. And so some of you are working, you know, many of you were probably working with this vision prior to de designation. Um, and then others are taking this on is kind of a new approach to how you look at services and really having a place where people can come in the community. So really a community resource. So regardless of, you know, whether you had a physical location long before the demonstration or it's something you really have been working on in the last few months and um, probably not working on it in the, in the way you had envisioned, but um, certainly all of your work was dedicated to kind of supporting your residents in the community. And so again, with all of this, as we talk about the Envision Center demonstration and as a national movement and approach to self-sufficiency, um, really taking, thinking about all the ways that you can kind of establish your Envision Center as your community resource for your clients, for your partners, for your funders. Um, again, really as a place where people can turn to knowing all of all the work that you do in the community. Um, one of the Envision Centers we were able to visit, we heard a lot about, you know, their reputation in the community and that how funders approached them just because they had, had established their place in the community as a good steward of funds and as an organization who um, could successfully implement programs. So again, you know, this is establishing an Envision Center as a resource in the community for all of these different audiences um, so that you can reach both potential both potential clients, but services and partners, service partners and funders. Again, just to reiterate, you know, we are seeing in terms of your Envision Center, three audiences um, that you're looking for. Again, clients, partners, and funders. Um, and first and foremost, for all of these, um, marketing your Envision Center, keeping, putting the knowledge out there of what you're doing in the community really helps to maintain re relationships with all these groups marketing what you do, what is available, what kind of resource you are. It'll help you to bring in new service partners, new funding opportunities, um, you know, marketing your Envision Center and the essential services that you're providing, let people know that you're here to serve. Again, from the two sites that we were able to visit um, back in March, we really got a sense of how they're invested and ingrained in their communities. And, you know, through their, their work, they really were able to convey how, how they had insight into their community's needs and how they were trying to answer the call of what, what was around them and what was most needed. So, uh, Christine's going to get more into kind of the nuts and bolts of marketing, but as we think about two things, I think we want to look at the two, two kind of overview things of thinking about inbound versus outbound marketing. Um, so there's kind of, again, two ways to look at it. Inbound is about bringing people into you, you know, what you present out there that's trying to engage people to come in and access the center, the services. Um, it's more targeted and really specific to the goals and that audience that you're trying to reach. Um, and then in general, outbound marketing is really kind of just what you're putting out there, the um, information that you're kind of putting in the world for people to see if they're finding you. It's, it's made for a wider audience, less targeted, but it's it's just the information that, that is there to find you. So as we think about, um, you know, they're equally important and, you know, they utilize different approaches and, and strategies and um, 
and all the things that you're doing probably fall into these two categories. And so it's just something to keep in mind as we talk about goals and keep moving forward. So just thinking about, again, the real process and plan of, you know, your marketing plan. And again, Christine's going to get more into the steps and the pieces of that. Um, but some of the things that we, we saw as we talked in vision centers and have made some of the direct TA calls to you, um, thinking about kind of the first piece that you really want to think about is a website. It's a very kind of in the, in the world of outbound marketing, a simple place to have information that can draw people in. It'll give people the base of information and understanding and kind of with the internet out there, when people do searches, you want them to be able to kind of find you, readily find you and understand the services that are out there. But it doesn't need to be complicated. You just want to have um, kind of that mark out there. Again, community-based marketing through the site visits. Um, we saw that the Envision Center teams really had a deep connection in the community, whether that was with other community influences or just general word of mouth things. Um, and that was an important piece that folks utilized. And again, um, as a resource for the community, really um, getting out there and understanding the community needs on, on, that, on that way. Um, we also, of course, you know, regular outreach and communication to folks. So whether that's through email or newsletters um, was certainly a, a, a good tool just to keep communication open. Um, and certainly we know there's lots of great individual programs that have their own successes. Um, and highlights, so really focusing on marketing your Envision Center based on those at various times as well. Any questions right now? Okay, great. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Christine. Hi, everyone. We're going to have a fun discussion on SWOT analysis. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this. SWOT is basically strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. If you've done the data collection portion, you've probably got pretty good feel for what your strengths and weaknesses are as an organization. What do we do really well? What do we need to improve on? The big difference here is that the strengths and weaknesses are more internal, things that you have control over. Opportunities and threats are the things out there that you have to deal with, but you don't necessarily have any control over how things are coming at you. So as part of, you know, your strengths may be that you've got um, tutors. Weaknesses, we're not sure how to get the information out there. Emerging needs, we know that there is a need for online tutoring right now. So many schools are going online. What's the threat? You know, do we have threats to this? A threat might be a lack of internet. So these are all things that you need to think about as you're going into developing your goals and making your marketing plan. All starts with the goal. So the first thing we're going to do is define our goal. Um, let's say, again, I'm going back to the data collection. Let's say that we had done a survey discussing what the community feels they need right now while we're in this incredibly weird time. So we've decided to focus on um, increasing our online tutoring. Who's our audience? Our audience would be probably uh, middle and high schoolers, but also the school, school counselors, and um, anybody who might refer or who might assist. Crafting our key messages, what are we trying to get across? Choosing our strategy, I want to talk about, I want to hold that thought for just a minute. Setting a timeline. When are we going to start this? How are we going to get the information out there? And how can we follow up to make sure the message is being received by the people we need to receive it? So you're going to always have to track what you've put out there. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It could be as simple as, we sent out this email to um, 
let's say 14 guidance counselors in the area and we heard back from 10 of them. Pretty good record. Has our information got out there? Yes. Did it get out there the way we wanted? Absolutely. Any questions yet? Okay, let's talk about defining goals. You want your goals to be smart. You need to be specific. What is it we're trying to do? We want to specifically increase the availability of our online tutoring. How can we measure that? Pretty simple. Um, last year we had 10 people in the program. This year we would like to see 50. Is that achievable? Do we have the staff? Do we have the tutors? Do we have the educational background? Is this relevant? Yeah, it's very relevant. Uh, extremely relevant to the pillars. It's reasonable, it's realistic, and it's result-based. How do you know whether you're doing a good job? Do you see grades going up? Time bound. When are we going to do this? How quickly can we get it moving? Is this something that we want to start now? And if it's a tutoring, probably. Or is this something we want to start next semester? You know, do we have the resources? All of these things need to be considered as you're walking through the process. I'm a big fan of writing down goals, little check marks, making spreadsheets, but that's me. Do you have to do it that way? No, you do what works for you. It could be as simple as writing the goal down on a sticky note and putting it on the refrigerator. Whatever works for you, that's what you need to do. You need to think about your audience. Who do we want to engage here? Who are our clients? Schools? Students? Teachers? Who are our partners? Again, the school, maybe uh, local PTAs. Uh, are there any community organizations who are trying to do this? You know, what, who could we work with to make a bigger impact? Funders, is there money out there? Does the PTA have a grant? Um, local community organizations, local um, philanthropy. Don't know what's out there until you ask, until you start digging around. That should be part of defining your audience. Who do we want to be aware of this program? Again, we come back to our pillars. This definitely hits educational advancement. Does it hit character and leadership? I would say yes. Um, a confident student is more likely to be a leader in the classroom, even if that classroom is Zoom or any other electronic medium right now and still be a leader without being there physically in person. Again, talking about our target audience, their demographics, location, what locations are we looking for in our area, our local school districts, what are our needs, tutoring, who can we work with? You know, can you reach to uh, local colleges, maybe local community colleges? Um, a lot of high schools in my state, which is Oklahoma, we have a community service requirement for graduation. Could you involve high school students there to possibly provide tutoring? Let's say you look at your current board and you know you've got a lot of people who are really strong with math and science, but English and history. How are you going to partner with different funders? Um, local historical society may have education grants. All of these things are out there. The key is you want to make sure, first of all, that they know who you are and what you're trying to do 
so that they can offer those resources to you. Which is how we get into crafting our key messages, which is step three. What information do you want to share? We want to share that we are increasing our online tutoring capabilities. We are really focusing on math and science. We would like to increase the availability of English, arts, history, anything like that. How does that tie back to our goals? Again, everything comes back to our goal. Our goal is to increase our ability to provide this service. Are we targeting the right audience? How do we know? By whether we get a response. Are we hitting the right people? If the answer is yes, we will see response, okay? That response may be an increase in like our website traffic. It could be an increase in phone calls. It could be anything that shows people are looking at us to find out more information, okay? That flows with the marketing strategies, which is step four. What can we do that will best serve our goals? Okay, well, let's stop right here and think about this for a second. You see marketing strategies, you're a very small center. Let's say you've got, you know, five people and you're going, well, I don't know how we do that. Doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as a really good website, which is super easy to do. Trust me, if I can do a website, anybody can do a website. They will literally help you build it online. It's very simple. Why is that important? Because that is where most people are going to start to look for information about us. So, Think about that as we talk about some of the different strategies. Digital is going to be a big one. Informative. This, you know, your website should be a lot of information, not too much because we don't want to overwhelm people and throw out this giant wall of words. But at the same time, they should be able to at least find out basic information. Programs, what are we offering? Social media, Lisa's going to talk a little bit more about that. Email. Email can be great, especially if you're using your website to develop an email list. People who are already interested may want to sign up for your newsletter for announcements, all of those things. Again, super simple to do this. It is You don't have to hire an outside consultant to walk you through this. You can do this on your own. You really want a lot of word of mouth. And with that should be some relationships. Because the more relationships you develop, the more people will find out about you. When I go in now to the counselor's office because my child doesn't understand physics and heaven knows I'm not the person to teach him. My counselor, my son's counselor can automatically say, hey, here's a list including the Envision Center and here are some of their tutoring offers. Okay, it's that simple. Make sure they know you're out here so they can refer people back to you. Make sense? Any questions yet? Okay, so let's talk about some strategies here. Informative, again, people need to know you're here. Build a website, put together um, newsletters, anything like that. Promote the programs you have available. Email weekly events, that's a great way to do it. Hey, here's our a quick calendar. This week we are offering um, introductions to 
not just online tutoring, but maybe financial planning and college applications, something along those lines, something that ties into assisting with the tutoring. Presence in the community. People need to know you're here and you're here to help. Your services are available to anyone. All they have to do is ask. Use that community calendar. Maybe you partner up again with local schools and the historic preservation for your town. Different ways to work within the community and get your information out there. Partners. It can be a super official thing where we have official partner and we have links to their website on our website, or it could be that our website is linked on theirs, or, you know, if they're already a bigger name in the community. Co-promote co with brochures at both locations. Again, you can do a basic email hand, or a flyer handout brochure. Online printing is a beautiful thing. Um, I'm a big Vista fan. That's me personally. That's not an official recommendation. I'm just telling you there are lots of options out there to walk you through. And the pricing is really, really reasonable. With your partners, you want to focus on how is this relationship good for both of us? What benefit do you as my partner get from this? And that may, again, come back to your data collection, your SWOT analysis. Where can we work together for benefit of more people? Make sense? I got silent, so I'm saying, yep, no question. Funders, engaging potential funders through your cause marketing. Here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to increase educational opportunities in our community. We need money to do that. We would love if you would direct some of your resources, you know, financial, people, anything that would help to improve our cause and to enable us to provide more services. Make sure that your funders are aware. Here are all the things we do. I know right now you're just focused on one particular goal, the tuition or the tutoring, but, you know, maybe we make them aware that we have uh, technical training for jobs, job placement services, and, you know, financial planning, anything additional that's being offered. They may not need it now, but they may know somebody who needs it or who is looking to contribute to that cause. So again, getting your information out there and Getting into the community so more people know is only going to be a benefit to you. Highlight your successes and programs for funders to find. Again, a lot of that should tie back to your website. Your newsletters should highlight things that are on your website. You really need to have this narrow focus on your website. Here's who we are. Here's what we do. Here's how you contact us, okay? I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit. When you are setting up a website, make sure that it works on desktop and mobile. Make it user-friendly. A lot of people are not going to have access on their desktop, and that's fine. And search engine optimization, always good. Make it pretty. And I know people are probably rolling their eyes. What does pretty mean? Make it easy on the eyes. Keep it simple. Keep it to where it's not a wall of words. 
We don't want it to be overwhelming to where everything we have, everything about us, we're trying to put on one page. Now, we want to hit the highlights, okay? Make sure, don't go with the fancy fonts. Keep it simple. Keep it clean. Make it very clear. Here's where you go for additional programs. Here's where you go for upcoming events. Make it very user friendly. Be clear about what your mission is. What are we trying to do with this Envision Center with providing these resources? Try to keep your website updated. Make sure your content is always current. There are very few things more frustrating than going on somebody's website and all the events were six months ago. You know, pictures, if you can rotate pictures in, that's great. Make sure you have consent if you are taking group pictures. I always tell people there's a good chance this is going to wind up on my website. If you don't want it to, turn around and talk to the person behind you. That way, they have their option. A lot of people love being in it. Some people don't. And as long as you notify people, should be pretty clear. And again, I'll have people in trainings here being like, okay, well, I know you took my picture last time. Why isn't why it on your website now? So we really want to push the people who want to be out there. Let's use them. Let's get them on there. Questions on that? I know we are throwing a lot of information at you all today. Okay, email campaigns. Really cheap. You can hit a lot of people. Are you hitting the people you want to hit? How do you tie your email campaign to your marketing strategies to be effective? Again, go back to your website if possible develop an email list. We will let you know when these things happen. Um, always refer back to your website and make sure that what you're tying to an email is what you have reflected there. Everything should tie together and be seamless, so we're very clear. Okay, we've got a good question here. Someone asked in the Q&A, should the website be a standalone site or on the Housing Authority site. And I would say it's entirely up to you. If you've got your group um, is already used to looking at the Housing Authority site, I would probably just stay there. You can think about developing a standalone site that links to the Housing Authority. Just what do you feel is best for you and Again, if you're really, if you're just now starting out with it, keep it as simple as possible. Maybe you kind of develop some content on the Housing Authority site and get a feel for how this works before developing your own site, if they can work with you and assist you. But a lot of it's going to come down to what are you comfortable with? Great question. Okay, distributing a newsletter, super simple. Can do this through um, email as well. Keep it simple. Again, we don't want to overwhelm people. I am the worst person. If you send me a giant email with or a newsletter that has everything there, going right in the trash because it's just too much. Hit the highlights. Make it simple for me. Show me what I need to know. Tell me where to go for more information. Again, update your audience about what you have coming up, programs that are coming up, new events. <laughs> Someday when we, you know, we get to have in-person events again. Highlight what you're doing well. You should have that included in your newsletter. It should be on email. It should be on your website. If somebody's received new certification, 
tell people about it. If you're bringing in um, new tutors, let people know. Students who have made the honor roll after being in the tutoring program, that's definitely a success you'd want to highlight. Not only that, it's going to really help the person who's being recognized. Give them that positive feedback. There's nothing negative about positive feedback. Again, always try to keep it to one page max. Any more than that, and it just, it's too much information. Again, I'm a big fan of emailing newsletters. I think that's a real easy way to hit your audience. If you have, you know, a group of community um, resources, keep going back to your historical societies in town, um, museums, schools, anything like that. Maybe you want to do a mailer out to um, PTA members if the school is give, willing to give you that list. Whatever works to get that info out there. Just don't don't get hung up on thinking it has to be perfect because it doesn't. What it has to be is informative. Get it out to them, get them in the loop, and you continue to build on your successes. So, yeah, your first one you may look back at two years from now and go, wow, that was not our best effort. But you keep getting better. That's the whole point, your experience getting your info out there, getting people aware and involved. Community-based marketing. Okay, the first thing I have to say to this is, if you are using grant money, be very, very aware of allowable costs and cost principles in 2 CFR 200 and in your grant. If you're not sure that you can use grant monies, have somebody else use other money, get donors, um, partners, anything else. Just don't use your grant money. So you want to participate in community events. Um, Going back to the housing authority, I know quite a few housing authorities have a uh, partner up and do health fairs. Have you been involved in that? And um, anything where it's going to combine efforts because you have the same type of audience work together. There's no reason not to. Participate in events. We know that um, the local museum does uh, art appreciation for kids during the summer. Is there a way you can get involved with that? Again, you're engaging with funders, participating in the partner event as well. Someday we'll be hosting events again. Can you do an open house where you have booths that, that put out here are some of the different programs we offer. Maybe somebody else assists in providing refreshments, anything like that, different materials. All of these things to where you can work as a group and maximize those results. Okay, any questions before I turn it back to Lisa for setting timelines and implementing and tracking? And we'll have time for questions at the end as well. So whatever works for you. All right, looks like Lisa's up. I'll be hanging out in the chat. Great, thanks, Christine. And I do want to reiterate, you know, please feel free to raise your hand. Um, if you're having trouble with that button, you need to have the panelist or attendee participant section open at the bottom. There's a little hand icon. And feel free to use the chat. Um, you know, as we talked about, the, the technical assistance grant with the Office of Innovation is, is an ongoing thing. And 
Um, these webinars help us to bring some topics to light, but we know that each Envision Center is a little different and at different stages. Um, and so this is an opportunity where we all have you together to kind of bring new questions to light. And, you know, I can't guarantee that we can answer it immediately, but any questions you may have helps us to think about technical assistance on the larger scale. So feel free to throw those questions in at any time um, or to raise your hands now. Um, and then I'll keep moving in, like Christine said, and he said, we'll open up all the phone lines just to make sure everyone has a chance at the end. So again, so, um, you know, Christine talked about all the pieces of a marketing plan. And again, one thing that she kept saying is to keep it simple. It doesn't need to be this huge, robust system, but kind of as we talked about with data collection or any plan, you do want to set a timeline. It helps to keep you on track. Um, it could be, you know, a simple plan that's really something you're doing over the next month or a timeline over something that is a plan that lays out the next year of a lot of outreach into the community in a variety of ways, especially for a new Envision Center, really trying to get, um, you know, the word out and let people know that you're here, what you're doing, what your mission is. Um, but either way, setting a timeline helps, you, helps to keep everyone on the same page, ensure that things are moving along, that you're meeting those goals and deadlines that you set out at the beginning. Um, and it's just really a good reference point. So again, none of these things need to be these exhaustive, large, overwhelming pieces, but um, a timeline helps everyone to keep on track to make sure that you're in line to meet, to meet the goals and to get the information out that you want to in the way that you want to, in the way that you want it to happen. So, and, you know, again, um, you know, Christine talked about all these, all the different steps we're taking and strategies we're utilizing. Um, but we want to know the impact of that. And again, so depending on the goal, it might be two main steps out of your plan, but you still want to know what those results are. It could be that you want to bring folks in for a one-time meeting or an event that was aimed just to, you know, get folks into a conversation at the Envision Center. And that's all you really need to look at. How many people did you outreach to, as she said? How many people came in? You know, what were the goals? What were the, what were the results? What was most effective in that vein? Um, it might be the, you know, a larger scale thing, kind of the whole development and implementation of, say, a new tra training program for single moms. Um, regardless if it's big or small, you still want to know if you were successful. You don't want to reinvent the wheel in terms of how you outreach to different communities or different audiences to reach different goals. So as you're implementing plans, again, whether small or large, you want to take the time to track and look at some measurements and, and some statistics about how impactful impactful you were, um, you know, track to success, success, did you meet the goals, did you reach the target audience, how long did that all take? Um, again, these are all things that help you really plan for the next time. Um, and just, you know, just keep you in a way so you're not reinventing the wheel. So again, what we wanted to talk about, like data collection, there's many steps that could be part of this larger process. But what we also want to reiterate is it doesn't have to be this huge process and take a lot of money. All the, some of the tactics and things that Christine talked about can be free. Some can cost small amounts of money, but it all, you know, it all plays into what works for you and what works for your Envision Center, what works for your goals. But in terms of looking at your larger marketing plan, just thinking about your roadmap um, for how you are delivering your services or your information to clients. And as she talked about kind of the larger step is, you know, you do want to start with assessment, know where you are, have all those pieces in place, and so you know the best way to approach things. Setting goals, looking at your audience, understanding what resources you have in order to make this marketing plan move forward. And again, it doesn't have to be a lot of money, a lot of resources. It might just be the time to come up with the right flyer and the messages and to reach out to the right people. Again, the you know, the methods are going to vary, and those are all things from, you know, a simple email blast to really some more um, that's the long-term marketing plan if you're really looking at a bigger program. Um, you know, it's just, um, you know, again, it could be as simple and what's the timeline behind it and how you look back at things. So again, your whole marketing plan could be very simple. It could be just getting seniors in the center, trying to get more seniors to come in the center, you know, getting them to engage in their activities outside their home. Um, and it could be a larger program trying to get youth into a whole summer program and what that entails. Um, but the base of it all is that the marketing plan needs to work for you and your goals. Um, and it can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be when you're looking at doing it. But overall, 
the way to best make things move forward is to put some sort of plan in place, some, some, something, um, something that helps guide your strategy. So there was a question is, what is a realistic time frame to see results of an updated marketing strategy? Um, and Christine, please chime in here. I, you know, I, I guess it, it's probably um, depending <laughs> on the timeline itself in, or the, you know, the timing of what you're looking to do and part of your goals in your audience again. So you might, um, I don't know if there's a set realistic timeline. Um, it'll be based on kind of what your larger plan is. So if your long-term goal is to increase year to year, the number of students you have coming into an after school program, then the timeline is going to be based more on that. If you're looking in a three month period to just get more people to come into the center, it's going to be based on that goal. So I think that that's, I'm not really giving a great, you know, a hard answer, but I think it all depends on things, which is, um, you know, if you're building something short term or long term, that's what you're looking for. So, Christine, I know you're chiming in on chat too, so. Yes, I did, and it, and you've really hit what I would have said. A lot of it depends on your goal. Is this something that we need to move pretty quickly on, and then getting information out, getting people aware, moves a lot more quickly than you know developing a new program. So a lot of it comes down to what is your goal and how quickly do we need to get this in place. I mean, it could be as realistic as um, maybe 10 days for uh, response time on an email. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. If I haven't answered it here in chat, like keep keep asking and we'll, we'll get that answer. Great. So again, just to you know, a marketing plan. Again, it's as simple or as complex as you want. We, you know, we want to touch on kind of the larger pieces as you're, you know, as you're thinking about a new strategy or a new program, or you know, just a whole relaunch of your Envision Center once we can reopen the doors and how you want to get that out. To think about all the different steps you might take um, as you're going along, but. Again, it can be small, it can be large, and it's got to work for you and, you know, work for work for you and whatever resources and things that you have to dedicate to that. Any Great. So, again, you know, as we talked about in terms of the marketing, um, you know, clients is obviously a big audience who you're looking at, um, but thinking about some of the audiences within an admission center, youth is definitely um, one of the main audiences that an admission center is probably reaching out to, and as Christine talked about, certainly in this time of, you know, virtual learning, the need for for youth might be a little um, elevated and wanting to connect with them and um, provide services for them. So in terms of thinking about youth, um, of course, kind of putting out information where they are, so utilizing school channels and guidance, you know, guidance offices. We know we talked to one envision center that gets that gets texts um, from the school to know how the kids are doing on a given day. And so obviously there's kind of a partnership there. So utilizing that conversation and letting schools know, as kind of Christine said earlier, that you're out there and the services you have. So when students are coming in and having issues, you are one of the services that they know is out there for the students. Um, and again, um, with children, and we talked about social media, certainly social media is a big thing with young people, but targeting targeting where they are, using the kind of messaging that's going to grab their attention, um, you know, in this time of, of gadgets and tools and things like that, um, kids are on their phones and on social media and on Facebook. And so putting out information on those mediums, if you're targeting that as a group, you know, utilizing and meeting them where they are. Um, Um, and then another group that certainly is in is probably in high need right now are seniors. Um, seniors can certainly feel isolated in general, but um, under kind of our under our current pandemic, where they need to probably stay at home to be a little safer, um, they're feeling more isolated. But reaching out right now, you know, certainly reaching out through emails or newsletters and trying to connect with them just to know um, that you're out there and, and you know keeping the relationship going. But in general. Um, 
you know, creating personal connections with seniors, again, because of that isolation, really understanding the interaction they need and playing on that and developing that personal trust in terms of being there for them. Um, obviously, having, you know, some sort of way to make seniors feel exclusive in the programming that you're um, promoting and um, marketing to them. Certainly, sometimes for seniors, it's just getting them in the door. That's the first step, getting them out of the comfort of their own home. So holding like a, you know, a little free event or social event just to bring them in, something that they're not committing to long term, but that really gets them in the door so that they can connect with you, connect with the services, understand how the Envision Center is there to support them. Um, you know, so really, again, making like with you, but also just on a different end, using concise language and vibrant pictures, just really helping to attract them into the center um, so that they can get a sense of what, how they can be you know, what the services are when they come in the door. Any questions there? Okay. Um, so, and then, the, you know, as we talked and met with a lot of Envision, you know, saw the two Envision centers on, on our site visits, really, you know, gainful employment is just a huge component of attaining self-sufficiency and certainly, in some of the conversations I've had directly with Envision Centers, that was one of the things that a lot of people have really focused in on and one of the biggest pieces and one of the pillars that really um, folks are doing a lot of great um, work and programs in. So I think when you're talking and looking at people who are, you know, looking for employment, taking the opportunity to be really specific about what the opportunities are, what kind of fields they're in, what sectors there are. Again, I think people, the more information you can put out there will help individuals be more comfortable in terms of coming in to ask for assistance. Really understanding that if um, hospitality is a large sector in this area, that, that that's the programs that you're focusing in on. So knowing, again, having a sense of what's the need in the community and, and communicating that out to folks. Um, you know, we heard, we've heard about some really incredible job training programs and kind of the benefits around that. So building the skills, you know, um, or talking about the benefits of the program in terms of building marketable skills, kind of the certification and job training that you get through that. But another huge piece of that is um, we know getting back to the workforce can be intimidating and many, many of you are providing services that are beyond just linking someone, linking someone to a job. You know, there's numerous barriers to kind of maintaining employment. Um, that make it difficult. And so we know many of your programs really um, provide support services to help to help address those barriers. And I think that's a huge piece of not someone just trying to connect you with a job, but really helping you through the whole process. Um, we also heard about programs that have a nearly 100% job placement. So putting those statistics out there, knowing that if putting out your successes so that when people come in the door or read about you, they understand that they're coming into a place that can really help them take those next steps to, to get to self-sufficiency and to get to a place they want to meet their own goals. Um, any questions on that? Okay. So again, I think just to kind of wrap it back up, we're thinking about marketing and why it's important for your Envision Center. Um, you know, Envision Centers and the, the approach behind them is really creating this centralized hub of services, this community resource bringing all types of services and programs into one place. And so you wanna be sure people know that. Um, know that while they're at home, there's still services they can get. And then when we kind of get to be back out in the world on some level of normal, quote unquote, that you're there for those services as well. So, um, sorry, I just noticed a typo on this, I apologize. <laughs> So really um, having, you know, solid marketing plan or strategy that will help your Envision Centers to grow and expand really bringing in more clients and partners. Um, thinking about the more you outreach in the community, the more you're out in the community, the more individuals will be open to the needs that they have. Um, marketing can really help you support your various relationships within the Envision Center. And so, you know, just wanting to always think about how you're telling your story to bring people in. And so kind of, well, that's just to wrap up again, you know, what we wanted to communicate that throughout all of this is that marketing should be simple. Um, you know, there are multiple steps to a process, but you might only need to utilize one or two. Um, we don't want marketing to be overwhelming to an admission center or to your audience. And a lot of it is just about planning. Um, it's the process of connecting and communicating 
you know, with your clients and enhancing relationships. And again, whether those relationships are with your partners or funders um, or clients, again, keeping it simple and getting the word out in a way so that people know that you're there to help them. Um, so I'm going to stop there and kind of open it up to questions um, for both Christine and I and um, our support person, Janet, is going to open up all the phone lines so that anyone who might just be connected by phone can feel free to chime in. If you don't have any questions, feel free to remute yourself. Um, and again, feel free to keep putting things in the chat. Um, and Christine, I'll see if there's any kind of um, last minute things you want to add while we wait to see if there's any questions. Um, just thank you for participating. Please, we'll stick around for a little bit. If you've got questions, don't hesitate. The only bad question is the question that wasn't asked. Um, the main thing I would tell you, keep it as simple as possible. Think about what you would like to see, what would engage you, and then try and reflect that back when you develop your own marketing. Thank you. I'm going to unmute everyone now. Oh, great. I'm going to do it right you. now. One second. Okay. She goes, oh, four. She's over five. I know. Okay. Um, Dana, I think maybe there's a little too much background noise. If you're able to decipher who the folks are, oh, I think it's going away. Are there any any additional questions? Feel free to raise your hand. We might have to. We we all know we're kind of living and working in. Not, not ideal situations with background noises, but I don't um, I'm gonna stop anyone from being able to answer ask questions. Um, I see. Are there any questions, Jana? Uh, could you remute everyone? I guess, and then if anyone. It doesn't sound like anyone was asking yeah, questions. Start muting people now. Um, um, we have we have one question. I do. Um, what are some of the best social media platforms you would advise to use for Envision Center marketing? Sorry. Um, what? Sorry. Could you repeat that? I heard. Oh, sorry, I saw the question. So in terms of you, you said the question was, what are the some of social media platforms that you guys to use for Envision Center marketing? Okay, here I go. All right, here. So Christine shared Twitter. Certainly, I think. You know, for younger folks, I think um, things like um, Instagram, I don't know. I am not a social media person specifically, but I do think Facebook, it's, you know, I think it's a matter of comfort level. Um, part of being out in the community, certainly finding out what what um, your community members are looking and listening to, talking with the kids. You know, certainly through word of mouth, finding out what they would use. It's not, I don't think there's a one-stop answer. Um, could certainly different groups, different communities, things are different, um, are being used at um, higher levels, different places. So, again, you know, it's always hard to say there's no one answer, um, but it's, it's kind of based on your audience and what information you're trying to communicate. And Christine has shared Twitter, but I think, is there anything else, Christine, that you'd want to add? Um, I think it depends, again, who are you trying to reach and where are they? Uh, Twitter is an easy one. Instagram, again, can be a great place to start. I personally would avoid Facebook, but that's me personally. Um, I know a lot of people 
and have really good community pages there. Just make sure that somebody's going to have time to really monitor it because you know how things can get. Great. I will say we have reached 302. Christine and I will be on um, as long as people who want to stay. Um, so feel free to keep throwing in questions. Um, okay. We have one question, but I just wanted to say for those who do have uh, a calendar that they need to adhere to, thank you so much for your time. Feel free. Um, we will send a quick follow up. And so if you have follow up questions to that email, feel free to reach out. Um, but again, Christine and I will be on the phone until um, all the questions are finished. So thank you for all of you and your time and your attention today. Um, if you need to leave, feel free to do that. But we're going to keep chatting, um, which the question is, what advice do you have to marketing? What advice do you have to marketing to individuals who may not have internet access or a device? Um, certainly that's something, you know, um, worried about now in terms of connecting with all of, all of us being at home. I do think, um, you know, that might be a lot of word of mouth. We did see through some of the site visits that we use that through whether that's community navigators or program coordinators within kind of um, some of the services, making those individual phone calls and contacts. Um, certainly, I think, you know, in this world of paper, but having quick flyers or small brochures that you can give out to people when they come into their initial meetings um, or through other community, community meetings, having flyers or brochures that are out. And I guess that's partly going back to the old school kind of, you know, pre-internet or, or smart devices, really having some paper that they can take home that are, you know, that summarizes quick information about the programs and how to get in touch, touch with someone not on a, you know, device or through internet. Um, Christine, do you have anything else to add on that one? Yeah, I think that one's really where your um, your personal networks are going to come into play. Somebody just basically grabbed it. Church, schools, community centers, exactly. This is going to come back to who have you partnered with? Who are your funders? Are they going to have face-to-face -face interactions with these people so that your funders can basically refer you in as a good resource. I also want to back up a little. There was a great question on basically best practices. How do we start this out? How are we going to divide this so it doesn't come all on one person? Because it should be a group effort. It's always better with more brain and practice. And I would sit down and just start talking it through. Where do we want to start? What is important to us? What do you think our biggest strengths are? SWOT analysis as a group is a great start that. What do you think we do exceptionally well? And how do we get that out into the community to bring people in? Okay, we did have a question about the slides being provided. Um, in the inter we can, we're, again, we're trying to host everything on one site, but we can send these out um, to all the attendees. So we will provide the slides. Great questions, keep them coming if you're still here. Anything else? And I don't know who put this out here, but the naturally occurring network, that's really something you should consider when you're evaluating your strategy because everybody has a network. You know, maybe you reach out to a lot of associations that might want to get involved. Um, so many churches have so many programs. I know. Some of our churches are doing direct fishing. So, again, coming back to, I think I plus coming back to people coming back to that. Christine, you're going in and out a little bit. 
I'm going to chat. No. Any other questions? Hi, so I had a question. Um, when developing a marketing plan, I was wondering if there's any best practices for breaking down uh, that plan into multiple roles or dividing it among, amongst team members. I, I think in terms of, you know, I guess that's part of, I think, looking at the plan and taking those steps into what Christine, I think she might have said this, is looking at kind of looking at your SWOT and your assessment of, of, you know, where you stand now, what kind of resources you have, what would be the issues around things. So I don't think there's specific best practices, but I think that's part of the larger conversation in terms of thinking about the plan, breaking down your audience, your steps, your resources, um, and, you know, having open conversations and timelines about which staff members, you know, the role most associates with, who has the time, the resources, um, and breaking it down within the Envision Center, I think, because also some Envision Centers are, you know, two people, two people machines and some have a dozen. And so it's, again, working within um, what works best for you, but putting a plan together and kind of taking a step back and looking at all the steps so that you can assess what the real needs are, what the goals are, and who's best suited to support that. Um, it might have been my background, Christine. So if there's anything else you want to add to that question? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, yeah, a lot of it comes back to who's comfortable with what. You know, looking at the steps, we'll just throw them on here. Here are the steps we need to address. So, as a group, who's comfortable with which? Do you want to work on who, who can we partner with? Who can we fund? Are you wanting to reach out? Do you feel more comfortable doing the writing? Would you be more comfortable developing a timeline? Where do we have strengths? Where are our weaknesses within our staff and everything else? And how do we reach out to that? Um, again, we've got pretty good answer here in chat, and Lisa had a lot of discussion as well on how do you market to people who don't have internet access? And it comes back to personal referral. Are you partnered up with somebody who can reach out to that? Who do we know? Where do we know? Who's in our individual personal notes? If they know, you know, can you use the church bulletin board or church newsletters, anything like that? Is that reasonable? Is that doable? All of these things, don't limit yourself. Be creative, throw everything out. You can sort through the ideas later, but by all means, reach out to anything that comes into your head, throw it out, see if it's gonna work. Those of you who are still online, you probably want to, you may want to go back and look through the chat and see some of the discussion we've gotten here since my sound is back and forth. So that might help give you some new ideas. Maria, did you want to add, jump in? I see your hand up. Sorry, yes. Um, trying to mute, I'm mute here. Uh, oh, we just lost you, Maria. There you are. Okay. Can you get, can anybody hear me? Yes. Okay. No, I was just going to um, suggest, I know you always do, that maybe there's a way we can uh, capture this information and send it out to all of the attendees so they can see the uh, responses. Yes, yes, Maria, we'll do that. 
Yeah, that's awesome because there's a great discussion that's going on right now. Oh, yeah, everybody's been amazed. Okay. Well, it seems that the questions have died down. So, again, um, to, uh, um, Jewel asked, thank you for your time. Our next um, webinar is August, September 22nd, and you'll get information on that in probably a couple weeks. But all of our flyers and announcements on those um, have all the dates of the upcoming webinars. So, um, again, we appreciate your time and attention today, and thank you so much. Have a good rest of your afternoon.